Okay, uh, just a little word about me. I'm Federico Campoli. Uh, I work for TransferWise. I am the uh, I've been the first data engineer. Now we are two, and I am the second guy with the Postgres tattoo. <laughs> the first one is Devrin Gundutz, which he, uh, has become father right uh, a couple of days ago. So. Uh, Amazing. So uh, uh, this presentation is uh, it was intended to be for the uh, Postgres Conf in Warsaw, but I was late. Uh, it was so successful the uh, lightning talk I missed. So you are enjoying something that the London user group already uh, did. So the idea was uh, oh wrong one oh. Whoa. That's it. That's Thank you. We are ready. <laughs> let, me, let me move in this way. Okay. So Postgres is an amazing RDBMS which can help us to cook a delicious dish of spaghetti carbonara. Why spaghetti carbonara? Because I've seen any crazy uh, recipe. Fried eggs on the top, mix it with the wild rocket. So let's clear and let's use our uh, database of choice to cook a delicious dish. So let's find out how. Um, the idea is let's write the schema. So we need a boiling pot for uh, the quantity, temperature, and content. The mixing bowl table is still content and quantity, but not temperature because we are not cooking anything inside and the frying pan with content and quantity the temperature it will be decided by the oil so let's avoid any uh, precision in, in that direction then we need the ingredients so simple table ingredient name quantity alternative notes status ordering cereal and the constraint over the ingredient name but it's very dangerous to have this table without any check against the blasphemous ingredients. So let's put a constraint check to avoid things like ham, cream, belly slices, parmesan, wild rocket, mushroom, tomato, pineapple, onion, garlic, spam and marmite. I've seen all these ingredients used in carbonara. So, uh, probably if any Italian is listening to that, probably will want to expand this, 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 this kind of list. Or maybe it should be uh, some sort of white list instead of a black list. So let's stick just to the correct ingredients. So, how to, let's add the proper things into the ingredients table. First thing, spaghetti. And the note says, get the pasta al dente, subtract, subtract, tra, subtract one minute from the cooking time. Al dente, it means slightly more chewy, and it's, uh, it's up to you if you like it or not. Second ingredient, pork chick guanciale in, Itali in Italian. And the alternative can be the bacon pancetta. The difference is pork chick is more greasy and it melts down much much better the bacon is a good alternative and I say sorry for any Italian listening to that but it can be used and in particular people coming from Rome they get no compromise guanciale or not <laughs> but if you cannot find guanciale it's absolutely okay but this is, ends the, uh, the list of alternative ingredients because we have to stick to pecorino romano cheese medium eggs, coarse salt, 4 grams, and fine salt, 2 pinches. And this is required for different moments of the uh, cooking. And ground black pepper and olive oil, if you use the extra virgin olive oil, be careful because it can burn out very, very si in a very, very simple way, but it gives a better taste and better flavor. So, how to mix this thing? Simple, PLP GSQL function. Make carbonara, please. So we declare the temperature with an integer. And so the first thing is a raise notice. He says, OK, let's add uh, pepper, eggs into the mixing bowl. So insert into mixing bowl. Quantity, select from ingredients where ingredient name is in medium sized eggs, ground salt pepper, and uh, black pepper, and fine salt. We put all together. 
Then we start mixing the uh, uh, hardcore cook and chefs, the Italian hardcore chefs use a fork. If you, want, uh, if you don't want to use a fork, you can use a simple whip, very, very simple. Mix all together, wait 10 seconds and they, perfetto! So next step is we add the olive oil to the frying pan, turn on the fire and weigh and add the pork chick. The pork chick, it doesn't have to be crispy, so you have to cook until it becomes uh, soft pink and stay soft, otherwise it, you will lose all the flavor inside uh, your carbonara dish. And when it's finished, molto bene! So, now we add the water and wait until it boils. We don't add salt uh, until it's com uh, it starts boiling. And there's a simple reason, I will explain later. But, uh, so, for each temperature in select, generate series from, one to one and, uh, from 10 to 100, step 20. Be patient, the water is warming up, warming up. When it reaches 100 degrees, water is boiling. Let's add salt and pasta. So, we insert into our boiling pot spaghetti and coarse salt. There's one reason, because the coarse salt has to become all together with spaghetti. Because uh, it takes time for dissolving in the water, so the water first will soften the pasta and meanwhile the salt it will uh, reach the pasta gradually and will make the pasta more tasty, than, more salty than the if you start with the uh, with the salty water, so uh, this is the also this is the way in Italy we cook the the, the pasta. There's been a lot of debate. It do, it's not related with temperature. It's just related in the way the salt it gets into the pasta. And finally, we drain the pasta and put it back into the boiling pot without the water, of course. So we delete from boiling pot water and coarse salt, obviously dissolve. And then we insert the content from the frying pan. So we first add the uh, oil and guanciale from the frying pan. Then we add the eggs. Don't forget to give another little mix before adding the eggs. And then we mix all together. And finally, we add the grated cheese and mix all together. Finally, after having this thing into the uh, boiling pot, buon appetito! And the function returns spaghetti carbonara. And this is the output. So you can get this one to guide you through the perfect carbonara dish. And you can download the gist with the full working code at this URL. That's it.